Welcome back to our streamers tuning in online. Thanks for everyone that stayed around. We have a tendency to save the best for last. <laughs> our next speaker, oh, you don't want to miss this. I'm glad you're here. We have Olga Kubishinova. Close? Okay, Kubishnova. Kubishnova? Kubishnova. <laughs> she's the head of people at SoCal, and she's also a career coach. I've seen her speak before on this topic, and it is very exciting. Her talk today is about how to empower your own career journey. Please give a round of applause for Olga. Welcome to the stage. Okay, uh, hi, everyone. I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, today, I have a just 10 minutes lightning talk, so it's going to be very fast. Usually, it takes me at least an hour <laughs> to deliver my, my ideas. So I want to talk about uh, empowering the career journey, and uh, I want to talk particularly about growing your self-confidence. And I want to start with telling all of you that you are very valuable. I know some of you, and I know that some of you have great jobs, and uh, you are indeed know that you are valuable, and others may be just looking or want to look for a job or want to change and might have some self-doubts and imposter syndrome, yada, yada, yada. So please try to fight it over, leave your internal critic alone outside, close the door in front of his nose, and uh, remember that you are indeed valuable. doesn't matter if you never had a job before or you never worked in the industry where you want to work. So self-confidence is indeed is very important for your job search because if you are confident enough, you will apply for the jobs that you want to have, that you strive to have. And uh, if you don't think that you are not good enough, you will stay at a boring job where you might be burned out and uh, that you don't get any benefits at, right? Uh, and self-confidence doesn't mean that you apply for a job that you have zero skills for and uh, you don't know how to do that because that's just stupid. Self-confidence means that you know who you are, where you stand, and uh, you know where you want to go, right? And uh, the, biggest, the biggest part of it is uh, knowing your value and uh, knowing what you can bring to the table. And I think uh, this is very important that value that you can bring for the company, for the inner job that you're applying to, is not only based on programming languages that you know or some other physical skills that you have. A lot of skills you have naturally in yourself are very valuable. For instance, some people are naturally good with people. Other people are good with public speaking. And this is valuable. And uh, in many jobs, that would be a key moment for you to be hired. So uh, if you want to find a new job or get a new position at your current job or change industry, these are the six points that I think are super important. I already talked about the value and the value that you can bring is not necessarily the skills that you learn, but a lot of the times the skills that you already have. But it's also important to showcase on your CV, on your uh, application letters, the value that you brought in your previous place of employment or uh, places where you had some training uh, where you've done some project at your university or at your course. And uh, I always tell to all my customers that it's not what you've been doing, but what you did. A lot of people on their CV, they will write, I was managing, I was developing, but it doesn't mean anything. You could be developing and never develop anything. <laughs> you need to get to the final action. You developed, you've done, you increased that, you uh, made the site faster twice than it was before, or uh, the sales conversion uh, is improved, and so on. And this is something that will tell a potential employee that you can set the goal and you can achieve it, right? Uh, I put here that uh, artificial intelligence, and uh, I thought today of a very nice analogy. First of all, you need to use the tools that are available. You don't have to do things that can be done for you. 
And that uh, analogy that I'm talking about, if you have a washing machine at home, you're not going to be washing your hands by hand. Or if you have a dishwasher, you're not going to be washing your dishes by hand. Like, uh, why, why would you do the same with writing some text that you can edit, of course, edit and proofread things that you get to the chat GPT and so on? Because uh, when one works with the chat GPT, often you can see, I can spot on applications right now when text was generated and not edited, because it's always the same, it uses the same words, it's very easy. But the base structure, or at least like some volume of a text that you can rewrite some ideas how to package information, you can use artificial intelligence for that, and it's going to save you time. Uh, I always recommend to use the words that the employee use on a job post when you describe your experience. Again, be honest. Don't lie about your experience. You don't have to say that you've done something or have skills that you don't have. But you know how you can describe the same thing with different words, so use the words that they are looking for, right? Uh, and of course, do networking, like at the events like these, other maybe closer meetups when you can actually come and talk with the people who either work at the uh, company where you want to work, or even they have their booth and they are represented there, because the most Recruitment is actually happening through network, and then you can meet people and find out if that employer is actually a nice, nice company to work with, and uh, it's a nice place, nice place to be. And of course, nurture your self-esteem. Make uh, make sure that you search through people who are in the same position where you want to be, and see how many skills you already have. And for sure, you have a lot. Because as I said, it's not only programming languages, it's other things. If you want to work at uh, the same company for many years and grow from a starting position to a senior manager, you need to be able to communicate with people. You need to be able to get your networking at the company. You need to be generally likable. Because I doubt that being by a terrible asshole who cannot make friendships, you can grow at the same company from the bottom to top. Usually it's the other way around. It's a person who are able to make friendship with everyone and so good with people that they're able to connect with different people on a different level and make them like themselves. So uh, I just want to finish on the note of saying that you for sure got what it takes. And uh, uh, I hope I can bring you some value by that. Uh, by asking you to think about key skills that you have just by your nature. And uh, one of those skills may be actually fast learning things, being very comfortable with learning new technical skills. Or maybe you are great in learning new languages. There are people for whom learning new language, I'm speaking about actual language, not uh, programming language, is a very, very easy thing. And there might be some jobs where you speaking three or four languages would be a great advantage. And it doesn't have to be a translator job. It can be a marketing job or the engineer job or something like that. And you would be selected for that particular rare skill that you have just because this is who you are, because you were born that way in a multilingual family or you lived in a different country and you had to develop that skill. And uh, you can always get a new skill along the side, but uh, it's much harder to change your personality. <laughs> so that's it for me. My name is Olga. I am a career coach at Careers UG, as I mentioned, and I also am head of people at SoCal, as uh, Santana mentioned before. Any questions? Try that again. First off, round of applause for Olga, please. <laughs> we have time for questions. We do have time. Uh, it's, it's weird in the job market nowadays. I think a lot of, especially in the technology sector, a lot of people, over 150,000 Americans in the tech sector alone have been laid off or lost their jobs over the last three to six months. So this is a super timely talk. Um, I want to open it up to any um, questions that we have in the audience, and if we don't have any, I will ask a question. So, hands? Wow. 
I, I wanna I wanna answer to what you said. Sure. Uh, I think it's very humbling experience for many <laughs> Americans being laid off and being in the tech market. Uh, because in my experience also as a recruiter, uh, that many American people are very entitled to their jobs just because uh, to, to have the certain level of a job, not because of their skill, but because they are where they are geographically. And after before pandemic, the world was like already very big on remote jobs in tech. It was a big movement, but since the pandemic started, it started to go bigger and bigger. So uh, it's just it's just harder. You need to humble yourself and uh, get get in the trenches with the rest of the world. Yeah. That can be. That can be. Absolutely. Questions? No, then I will pose a question because I don't want you to miss out on this opportunity to hear from Olga. Olga, I don't often hear people talk about a job search in terms of self-confidence. How much of a role do you think self-confidence plays in someone's ability to be successful at either getting a new job internally at their company or applying for a new job or switching industries? I, I actually think like it's, if we say it in percentage, I think it's like 80%. Wow. I mean, if you don't think you are worthy of a certain job, you're just not going to apply. And this is interesting statistic uh, that usually women only apply to a jobs when they match 100% of requirements. So like if it says five years, they only will apply if they have five years. And men would apply about like 60, 70 requirements met, men apply. Uh, and I, I always try my fellow girls that, no, you should apply anyway. Like it won't hurt you. If it's not, especially if it's not a key requirement, and if you have four years and they ask for five, you still can apply. Like, what's the worst going to happen? They're not going to invite you for interview. Well, okay. The application process usually doesn't take such a long time. So, yeah, that's just uh, self-confidence. So, imagine how many jobs these women are missing on applying because they don't feel that they match the requirements. Fake it till you make it. Thoughts? Uh, well, Something like that. I wouldn't say fake it. Don't don't fake it. Be it. Well, thank you very much.